right. so take the stocking off and we can look at this. Let me help you whilst we um, inspect the leg. And I think what you're going to do is uh, stand down on the floor and turn and show us the back okay. of that leg, because I think all the varicose veins are on the back That's of your right. um, left leg. The, the first stage is to uh, evaluate the patient with them standing up. Um, I'm interested in the patient uh, telling me uh, where their veins are, the ones that are causing uh, them discomfort or uh, an unsightly look to their leg. And then we use the ultrasound machine to identify the uh, underlying anatomy so that I can decide exactly where I'm going to place the uh, uh, needles in the veins. Okay, so we're going to put one or two marks on the back of the uh, right leg. Uh, to, to help me with the uh, um, position of the cannulas. There's a tributary there, so there's a, a picture of the saphenous vein inside the uh, fascial envelope. Uh, then we inject some local anaesthetic at the sites of injection. Um, the needles we put in are fairly small, so it wouldn't normally cause much uh, uh, discomfort. But in fact, if you're lying there on a, uh, a bed in a treatment room, having any needle stuck in your leg is potentially unpleasant. Uh, so we inject a small amount of local anaesthetic at the places where we decide we're going to treat the veins. And then we introduce uh, a cannula of appropriate size. So for the larger, deeper veins, uh, we use 18-gauge uh, cannulas. And for the very small, superficial ones, 22-gauge cannulas. Just guide the uh, tip of the needle into the, into the vein. Perfect. And then we're in exactly, thanks very much. We're in exactly the right place to um, exactly the right place to make an injection of foam. So we put all of these things in. Um, and then when we're ready to go, we'll introduce the foam, which is precisely what uh, uh, was done last time. Tip of the needle is in exactly the right place. And then we'll do the same again. Three after this? I'm, the reason why we're putting uh, several cannulas into the vein is that uh, when we first started doing this, we used to only put one or two cannulas in the leg, but we found that gave incomplete treatment to the vein. So n unfortunately now on the receiving end, you get more injections, but on the other hand, the outcome is that more of the vein is destroyed, leading to a, leading to a good long-term outcome. It's a pink one, actually, a little injection there. Thanks very much. You ready for a three after this? I might need a bit more juice as well. Thanks. then we inject some saline and again we're in the uh, in the vein there. The purpose of elevating the leg is to minimize the amount of blood in the veins we're going to treat. Uh, blood has been shown to inhibit the effect of the foam. It's in fact uh, extremely powerful at stopping uh, at sl uh, sclerotherapy working. Uh, so elevating the leg makes the veins much smaller and facilitates the treatment. We use the ultrasound to locate the saphenous trunks, which are usually not uh, visible from the surface. And we can also identify the relationship between the varices and the trunk from which they arise, so that we can place an injection in the right place. So ultrasound is invaluable in assessing the limb, and then subsequently in uh, putting the needle in the right place. We inject uh, fairly small quantities, usually not more than two mils at each cannula at any one time. 
and we inject it rather slowly. Injecting it fast, uh, I think, is painful for the patient, can cause excessive uh, pressure in the veins. Uh, in some people, can cause thread veins to develop at the site of uh, injection. So we carefully inject uh, usually two mils into each cannula at each position. And we would inject 1% uh, fibrovein foam into the more superficial veins, where the veins lie in the uh, fascial compartment, the saphenous compartment, then I would use 3% fibrovein foam. The veins in the more proximal part of the limb tend to be rather larger, and we believe that 3% foam is probably more appropriate and gives a better result, a more definite occlusion of the vein than 1% foam, uh, foam in those veins. Well, we used to uh, inject veins uh, in only one place, which was uh, the original technique, but we found that if we just injected the great saphenous vein uh, around its center, then the extremes of the vein near the groin and uh, towards the calf uh, would often remain untreated and perhaps be the source of further varicose veins. So we now do multiple injections in the great and small saphenous veins, and our usual practice would be to do two injections in the great saphenous vein in the thigh and a further two in the calf. And the small saphenous vein, we would normally do two injections directly into the saphenous trunk, one more proximally. And uh, in addition to that, we do um, injections into all the major varices or major tributaries, depending upon the anatomy. So we finish up, on average, injecting somewhere between four and eight uh, locations in a limb with uh, varicose veins. Well, we find that uh, uh, after the treatment, after foam sclerotherapy, blood is uh, trapped within the vein as thrombus. And if we don't apply enough compression to the leg, we get a very large amount of thrombus in the leg. Uh, and that produces considerable pain, discomfort, even uh, thrombophlebitis afterwards. Uh, so putting a, a firm compression bandage on and leaving it there for five to seven days uh, is a very important part of avoiding that complication. There's a, a range of opinion as to how much compression should be uh, used. Uh, this style of compression will fit under most people's clothes very easily. Uh, and we found that it avoids the uh, tender lumps that some patients get uh, after their treatment. And so we now regard this as a pretty essential part of the management of veins by foam sclerotherapy.